So, who are you and what do you do? I'm Paul Harris and uh, proper job aside, I play bass in a local covers band called The Dangerous Brothers. Cool. Um, would you be able to tell us a little bit about the journey you've had to end up where you are in terms of music and performance? Um, my dad was a musician um, and he taught me how to play guitar when I was 13. Um, so I was lucky we were getting lessons for free. Mm. Um, taught me how to play that, ended up meeting a guitarist and a drummer at school, um, rehearsed. We did our first gig at Matthew Wormston Lower School, which was a talent contest, which we won. <laughs> nice. um, and then went on from there, really. With my dad being in the position he is, being a professional musician, he used to he used to know a lot of people in the in the town and the, on the scene and stuff. So he, he levered us in to a yeah. few places. We probably weren't good enough to be playing, in all fairness, being 13, 14. And he, we got some gigs where we were supporting, I think we, we did one with a rumble band. I was still on the go at the Winter Gardens and the, uh, Dave Ranshaw, the singer, rung me up and he said, um, do you fancy support as one night? And I was looking for gigs, keen as mustard at 14. Yeah. He said, yeah. And he went, we'll give you 100 quid and two crates of beer. Wow. Was that all right? And I said, yeah. <laughs> I put the phone down, wow, I've got paid. And we're getting beer at 14. Well, that's how it was then. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, so yeah, we did that, and then we didn't have a bass player, I was playing guitar. So my dad used to stand in the wings of the stage, playing bass, you couldn't see him, you could hear him. And then we kept doing that, we got a few gigs doing that, and then the guitarist in that band was playing, I think, with another lad who also played guitar, and another drummer, and they got a booking at Spiders, Spiders Web. Mm. And because I knew him, the guitarist, and he knew that I had access to some basses, he said to me, do you fancy playing bass for this one gig at the Spiders? So I said, yeah, I asked my dad if I could borrow his bass, and mm. he said, yeah. So we asked for that and gigged, did the first gig, and I've, since then I've never played guitar live again. Really? I've just played bass. Is, it, is there a reason, or um, other than like maybe you just enjoy bass more? Yeah, I just I just like I just like playing it. It was yeah. it just seemed to it just seemed to fit and it I mean looking back on it now I didn't know at the time it's always easier to find work as a bass player because they're not as uh, Yeah, I suppose everybody wants to be there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The guitarist yeah. it's always the drummer and the bass player that's the hard one to find. Usually the drummer's slightly harder, but the bass players and the drummers are usually the ones that are hard to yeah. find. So if you play bass or drums you if you want to be a musician you can usually find work. So um but yeah. Through my early through my early teens up to so I think I turned eighteen. No, that's before that. I think I stayed. Met met a few other lads who were writing original material. So we formed some bands where we was writing original, throwing some covers in, rough around the edges, played played places like Lloyd's, mm. um, Spider's Web, and then uh, a band called Curl who was an all original band, lost their bass player and I got tapped up to join them and cool. then I played with them for two years, I think it was, maybe just longer and that was different you know, to playing an original band because we got to places like London, York, Sheffield, I think we did Manchester as an original band. Um, recorded a few demos, got, a few, got record labels a couple of them were interested, one of them was supposed to come to the week sheet for let us down at the last minute. We got the place absolutely even, thinking oh, oh, we're right. gonna get signed. Yeah. And then he rung us half an hour before we were gonna go on so he didn't want to make it. So that was uh, that was a bit disappointing, but it was still a good night. So that that so that kind of just petered out really and then I met, went to college doing music, so met a lot of musicians and then I met another guitarist, a singer, um, and a drummer. And we decided we again original music, and then we took the pump on moving down to London and uh, giving it a go, giving it a go there. So we did that probably for about two years. Relative success, I suppose. We you know we were getting plenty of gigs. Uh, recorded a few demos. We recorded some in Huddersfield, I think. 
Um, Would you say that you prefer doing covers or originals? Um, I miss playing original stuff mm. because it's it's creative. Yeah, you know, playing playing covers, it's just a bit paint by numbers really. So it's, you know, sit down, stick a record on, or just playing that and work it out. With original stuff, it's you know it's like, it's, it's like you're drawing a bit of painting, I suppose. Yeah. Playing canvas, you yeah. can do what you like with it. But I do miss I do miss playing original stuff, but it's more it's more difficult to get a lot of people into a place, a venue, mm. to listen to original music yeah. than what it is playing Definitely. playing covers. So, but yeah, I stayed in London for a bit. That band split up. I joined another band just by replying to an ad in the NME, <laughs> looking for a bass wow. player. Yeah, got that, um, and did quite did a few gigs with them, uh, decent ones as well. Places like Borderline, Dublin Castle, played at the Cavern, and as bands do, that petered out. Um, I think the singer, no, the drummer's dad fell out. He's from Denmark, and he went home. So we, we struggled to get a replacement in for him. And then I just went off it for a couple of years, like just not, mm. didn't do well. And then I found an original a covers band that were looking for a bass player in Hertfordshire called Roundabout Zoo. So I joined them as a dep at first because they the bass player was sort of in and out. So yeah, I was depping for them, and then he left the bass player left permanently. I think he moved to guitar, and then they offered me that full time, and it was that was a real good, good laugh. Yeah. Um, just really got on with the lads in the band, and it was just a good laugh. But it was all covers. But you'd be doing stuff like functions and weddings, and mm. it could be a bit prim and proper sometimes, black shirt, red yeah. tie, that sort of thing. And then I ended up joining the Dangerous Brothers so through um, bad circumstances, really, because the bass player who was with them from the off, Carl Brumby, he died of cancer a few right. couple of years ago. So again, I was depping for Carl while he was ill, and. Um, when he when he died, he, they, they, they wanted to carry on, so they offered me that full time, and I've been doing that ever since. Brilliant! It's, it's great. So, what <laughs> kind of like gigs do you do? Because you mentioned with Roundabout Zoo, you did a lot of uh, weddings and stuff like that. Is that still what you do, or is it more kind of pop uh, and clubs? Well, yeah, with with the Dangerous Brothers, it's a little bit different. It, it's not as um, you, know, you, you you get what you get with them. Right. And there's no we want to book you for this wedding, but we want you to do Al Green as the first dance. So it's like, no, we, we, you book us, this is what we do, yeah. that's what you have. So, yeah, we do weddings, um, but it's mainly pubs. Pubs. Yeah, it's mainly pub gigs and um, the odd party here and there, a festival, sort of things like Healing Fest, we've done that. Oh, really? Yeah. So, we've averaged two gigs a month, four this month, so yeah, it's fairly busy. Even after yeah. 30 years, they're still, <laughs> they're still drawing a crowd, so. Is there a, um, a, a favourite gig that you've had, would you say? Um, yeah, I mean, the Cavern is obviously one, being a big Beatles fan. To what, the Cavern. What yeah, is the Cavern, but, sorry? It's where the Beatles started. Right. In, in Liverpool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I can imagine that's probably... 300 odd gigs there or something, and it's, wow. it's a bit legendary. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was good to get in there. Um, we used to, the forum was always good in Hertfordshire. Mm -hmm. I think that old spot, 2000, and it was always really full. 2000? What is it? A pub? A club? It's a, it's a club on a university campus. Right, okay. And it's, it's called the forum, but it is a proper venue. You don't have to be a student to get in. They've had, oh, some, cool. they've had some decent bands on. I think Ian Brown's played there. Wow. Dubs, Charlatans, Ellie Golding. We did one with Maximo Park. Feeder was another one that we, we ended up on the same bill as. Wow. So they was yeah. Um, they was always quite good. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It's it's strange. You know, you could find you you think mm, I've got a gig at the pub or whatever. I sort of said that like, why I should be taking you know, those a bit gig. They're all you know, taken from on the merit, but mm. you could think well, you know, we've got this gig at Lloyd's or whatever. You could just it could just come totally out of the blue and you can have an absolutely brilliant night. Yeah. Or it could be on the flip side, you think, wow, playing there, and it's just crap. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. Not many people know that they're not interested or... 
or whatever. So any gig where, really where an audience engages with the band, they're the ones for me. Yeah. Because that's what you, what you do, isn't it? Yeah, so, definitely. So, um, um, yeah. So what what kind of uh, music inspires you? You're obviously a massive Beatles fan. Um, yeah. What, what else? Um, Anything with a decent bass player and drummer, really. <laughs> um, Blair's a big one. Yeah. Um, Stone Roses. Uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. He's another one. Cool. It could could go on. Yeah. Led Zeppelin. That one's for you. Yeah. <laughs> for <your> dad. Um, <laughs> um, and you know it sounds sort of cheesy in that, but like being brought up with. A lot of musicians, I'd see them as a, an influence as well. Yeah, yeah. So people like obviously my dad and all the all the people, or most of the people that he's been in bands with. But growing up with it, you know, being yeah. that big, it was always like, wow, I want to yeah. do that. So they're an influence as well. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that. So you said off camera that you've been kind of gigging for about twenty-seven years. So in that time as a performer, how has the local scene changed, if at all? Um, it, it, it's, it, it's got, for bands it's got thinner, as in there's not enough venues to play, oh, I say it's enough, there's not as many venues to play, yeah. and the venues aren't as busy as they used to be. No. Um, I, don't know, I don't know what that is, I do it. It's, whether it's just people have got better things to do than just go out and watch that's, a band, I think there's so more weird things though, to do now. Bear prices, I suppose, but <laughs> and just just the pub pubs in general, whether they've got a band or not, just aren't as lively as yeah. they as they used to be. I mean, it must be really difficult for like original bands because there's just less and less places for them to play. Yeah. It's a lot of like open mics and stuff like that. Yeah, probably. and they all do it, you know, the open mic, you obviously go and you get your free drink, that's it. Yeah. You know, there's, you should really, open mic's a bit different, but I know some venues would try and exploit an, an original band just for the the exposure, you know, like it's a good thing, yeah. you know, we're giving you, we're giving you a chance to have a gig. Yeah, it's, it's, good for that. it's not on really. You know, no. should at least pay their expenses. But, um, Oh, I don't know, I used to. We used. To, well, I say we. Uh, when we used to promote our original bands, with uh, not, not me personally, I don't want to sort of get into trouble here, but we used to go around town with a bucket of wallpaper and a load of po posters on A4 and slap them on lamp. <laughs> get fined for that now, <laughs> can't you? You cut down. And, um, oh, right. Yeah, we used to get some phone calls from some managers, or well, from bars sometime going, you yeah. know. Take that off that lamppost or whatever, but you you don't need to do that anymore because obviously you've got Facebook and yeah. social media, so you can you can push it that way. And there's some bands that I think do it do it really well. And I think a lot if if an original band can crack that, it's it's a good thing. Yeah, it's it's kind of welcome. And um, but you, I think you've got to do that now to, to an original band to, to push it and be a bit kind of I don't know clever with it, I suppose, and just get a video done well and just stay in contact, get you following up and all that sort of stuff. Because you didn't have all that 20 years ago. Yeah. Which you did. And now I feel like your hands might be a sticky. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, with venues, like I, I probably couldn't list 10. Um, there's like Moon on the Water is quite a popular one. Yeah. At the minute, just on the promenade. I've not then, played there. Have you not? No. Uh, it does get quite a quite an audience. It's, it's a fairly, fairly decent size. But yeah, um, that's probably the, mo the main one I can think of. Well, that used to be called the Spanish Steps. Yeah. And I can remember being in there when I was probably 10, to go and watch my dad and stuff, and it was just absolutely rammed. Yeah. It was even, you know, you, just, you couldn't move. Um, but the venues you've got, you've got the Spiders. Um, Rick at the Spiders is always good. They are like good, yeah. Original bands. And he, he, you know, he looks after him, and he, he's a bit of a champion for original or any kind of music. There, mm. you got Lloyd's, the county. Um, County's good, yeah. Yeah, O2, not O2, O North, <laughs> Gypsy, O2, I don't know. 
Gypsy Tears, whatever it's called now. Uh, they still put Rift. bands on. Is it Rift? Rift? I don't think they have bands on. No. Uh, i trying to think. The Jubilee on the Widers. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another one. I know that one. Um, interesting, really, yeah. Some of the clubs, you've got the Carline, you've got the Old Clee. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. They, they, have, yeah. they have bands on, usually on a Saturday night. And then you just got your open mics, like Mucky's, um, Mucky Muldoon's, King's Royal. They have things on a Thursday and a Saturday night, and that's usually done, promoted by a lad I think it's called, I think it's called Rob Bywater. And he seems to be sort of quite in the yeah. local original scene, which is a good thing. Obviously. Yeah, you know, it's giving people a platform to. Um, and I think there's a lot of nights on the web as well. But yeah, there's there's not a lot. I mean, we used to we used to be pretty much nearly every pub we used to be the Fish, the Queens, um, Bootlegger. Bootlegger did gigs today. Yeah, on Sunday afternoon there was there was eight. Uh -huh. There was I used to love playing there on a Sunday afternoon. Um, Spanish Steps, which is moon on the water. The Beachy, yeah, still put gigs on, but you used to have a, a night nearly every Thursday for original bands. Right. And then they'd put a night on on a Saturday as well. It was like a ticket job. But that was almost a weekly thing. And used to do it at the college as well. I don't think they do it at the college now. No. Wheat Sheaf, that was another one. Yeah, I've not, I've not known Wheat Sheaf to do anything. That was a good night. Yeah. And the old screen bar on, yeah, which is now just a restaurant, I think. Um, so are the is it the Dangerous Brothers? Is that your band at the minute? Are they on like Facebook, any social media or, or anything? Yeah, we've got a we've got a Facebook we've got a Facebook page, Dangerous Brothers, Grimsby, as far as like that. But we we shortened the name to the Dangos. It looks like it's the Dangos. Or right. They call us the Dangos, and that was a bit of a nod to Carl, the the, the other bass player. Yeah. When he when he died, he's the singer Steve was like, you can't be the Dangerous Brothers without Carl. So we we're the Dangos. Right, but yeah, yeah. It's still got, that was always the nickname anyway. But Steve just said, that's it, we're just the Dangerous now, we're not the Dangerous Brothers. But you can still, we're still on Facebook just because we can't get the name changed. <laughs> so it, it, it still goes on as uh, Dangerous Brothers Grimsby. Um, but yeah, that's all we are. I don't think we don't do Twitter or anything like that. Yeah, 